there early on 855 Sunday. We're looking around, it was like us and Herman Gamada and his wife, and we were looking around. And then by the time everybody got in there, that place was packed. It was a bigger 855 than I've seen. The church grows people say October is your worst attendance. It's true. And then when November comes in, everybody comes They blast I'll call this um, meeting to order. Monday, November 3rd, 2014. I want to welcome everyone. Very glad to have with us tonight Reverend Steve Lyle, this morning of First United Methodist Church, who will come forward now and give us our invocation and also lead us in the place of flag. So would everyone please rise. Let's pray. Lord, we, uh, we come humbly before you right now because... We know in our hearts that you are the creator of all things, that you sustain the universe, you created everything we see around us, and what a beautiful world you have given us to live in. What a beautiful city, community, and we give you the glory for that, and we thank you for it because you have looked upon us, and you provided for us a place to, to live, but more importantly, to serve you, to honor you, to worship you in. And we pray that your hand would be upon us, be upon our community, continue to bless us as you've been doing. We pray for our leaders for this meeting tonight. We pray that everything that's done will be done according to your plan for this community. And again, Lord, we thank you for the leaders, the officials, those who give their lives, put their lives out for service to our community. We thank you for them. And we pray for, for all of this, that you will continue to bless us as the Smyrna First people, the Smyrna people, the, the community of this neighborhood of Georgia, just continue to bless us because you are the sovereign God who loves us and who blesses us. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And for those folks looking for a new church or just moved into town, I'm sure the folks at uh, Smarter First United Methodist would love to have you. And I uh, understand you can quit praying for Steve. Uh, he doesn't ride his motorcycle anymore. So you're done with that. So thank you, Steve, for coming by. Um, agenda changes. We do not have any agenda changes other than... When we get to um, uh, item 6B under formal business, 6D under formal business, that we will table that, um, that issue until the meeting of January 5th, 2015. So that's the only changes that we have. Uh, we have a proclamation in recognition of Poppy Weekend, Veterans Day Poppy Weekend. Corky Welch has that, I believe. And we got some ladies. They're always here. You might as well get in your pocket and get some money out. And don't be looking for dollars. We got a big crowd here. Hey, they won't leave till you help us out. Till you get a poppy. Thank you, ladies, for coming this evening. Uh, I'd like to read the proclamation. <clears throat> a proclamation by the mayor of the city of Smyrna, Veterans Day Poppy Weekend, whereas America is the land of freedom preserved and protected willingly and freely by citizens, soldiers, and whereas millions who have answered the call to arms have died on the field of battle, and whereas a nation at peace must be reminded of the price of war and the debt owed to those who have died in war, and whereas the red poppy has been designated as a symbol of sacrifice of lives all, in all wars, and whereas the American Legion Auxiliary has pledged to remind America, American annually of the debt through the distribution of the memorial flower. Now, therefore, I, A. Max Bacon, mayor of the city of Smyrna, Georgia, 
do hereby proclaim November 8th and 9th, 2014 as Poppy Weekend and ask that all citizens pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom by wearing a memorial poppy. In witness whereof, I have here to set my hand and cause to the seal the city of Smyrna to be affixed upon this the third day of November in the year of the Lord, 2014. Mayor A. Max Bacon. You'll take that down. You ladies like to say anything? Sure. Absolutely. As usual, we'll be at our three locations, Kroger down here on South Cobb, Kroger on Atlanta Road, and the Walmart on the East-West Connector. As he said, on November 8th and 9th, from 10 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Anyone here or in your viewing audience that would like to learn about helping with poppies, you're welcome to call our Legion at 770-436-2501. Just leave a message with anyone that answers to have one of us call you, and we will certainly pair you up with one of our auxiliary members so that you can learn and help us next time because we do this every Veterans and every Memorial Weekend. Thank you. I think there's plenty of pictures. <laughs> Here's my $10. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know what y'all laughing at. She's coming out there next. Okay. This might be the biggest, uh, largest amount y'all have ever collected here. We have, uh, the next item on the agenda is um, a presentation by the Smyrna's Vision Plan, and um, I'm going to turn this over to Council Member uh, Melanie Pritchett. I want to thank her and the committee, Terry Nullowich and Ron Fennell, and the folks that uh, gave up their time, countless hours. Um, I want to thank uh, the folks at uh, Market Street. They did a fantastic job, Kathy Young. Uh, she lives here, which was a bonus. She did so good. Um, but I want to thank again those citizens that, that gave of their time. And I mean, they put a lot of time and effort into this. Uh, because they are true stakeholders of our community. And uh, this is all about the future. Uh, so, Ms. Pritchett, I'll turn it over to you. So, I would just... Uh, Use the use the regular one. It's, uh, it's not an accident. Uh... All right. I am so thrilled to introduce our steering committee. We had 32 people on our committee, and we had five on the advisory committee that was from our staff. So I'd like for Eric, Ron, and Terry to come down as well because they were all involved in this process. Um, and then Kathy's going to come up after we introduce, every, every, everybody introduces themselves and do a slideshow presentation. Um, so at this time, I would like for everybody to come up and face toward the council in probably two rows. And then we'll, pat, we'll, well, we'll have you come this way and say your name and what ward you're in. Let's go move. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Great. And I also want to say that the number of committed citizens has been a pleasure and an honor to work with all you guys because you're so dedicated. We owe these citizens, every one, I think except for two people, because of work, has said that they will go on into the implementation process. So, um, Jennifer, Christy. Y'all come up here too. You're involved. Ken? Here you go. Here. Get up here. 
Oh, you can't get it's just somewhere because everybody's going to be facing this way so the camera can get you. And we'll start with Slade. Are there, are there any parents out there? <laughs> To get their face okay, my name is Melvin Pender. Uh, I'm in the second ward. Okay. Slade Gulledge, Ward 6. Angie Bolton, IBM. Jeff Bell, Ward 5. David Monroe, Ward 7. Paula Weeks, Ward 4. Marilyn Blackburn, Ward 4. Holly Bass, Ward 7. Michelle Murphy, Ward 4. Derek Norton, Ward 1. <laughs> and then y'all gonna turn around and face that so we can get you on the camera the film. Tony Britton with BB and T. Colin Gallagher, Ward Three. Kim Brinson, Ward Two. Dan Pinnock, Ward One. Susan Morgan, Ward Two. Charles W. Welch, Ward 6. Christy Ullman, Ward 7. Jennifer Bennett, I'm with the city, but I'm also Ward 4. And um, our staff, which was an advisory committee from the city, which was Jennifer, Eric, um, Christy, two other people, it Ken and Eric were all on the committee. So they gave a lot of their time and Ken, everybody worked, everybody up here is committed to the city of Smyrna, and it's so exciting that we finished our vision plan, and now we're going into implementation, and Kathy's going to tell us about that. So if y'all will all turn around and face the camera up here, so you'll be on TV, <laughs> and y'all move this way. Guys, girls, come make two lines, one back here if you have to. Okay, Mr. Now, Cameraman, now you, man, you got it. <laughs> so, and then, of course, Kathy. That's not their front. <laughs> and it's their front for the TV. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you can go ahead and sit down. Thank you all so very much. It has been an honor to work with all of you, and I look forward to the... Good evening. Thank you all for having us here today. I have executive summaries, and I'm just going to pass this to Terry. Obviously, I'm Kathy Young with Market Street, and I really appreciate being here. It's really exciting for Market Street to help you get to this point, and we just want to start off by saying thank you uh, for selecting our firm to help you facilitate the process. We're thrilled to be at this point, and I think, as you all know, we're not just at the end of this process, we're really at the beginning of the process in terms of implementation. So I'm going to quickly just go over, for your benefit, but also the public's benefit, a little overview of the whole process, which we began much earlier this year. In fact, the council voted to go forward in January. We started doing some planning in February, and uh, first meeting was in April. So. We're just going to kind of talk to you a little bit about what this process has really meant. And it is, at its basic, it's a three-part process. And you can see up on the slide here, we have a research phase, a vision phase, and an implementation phase. And, of course, the implementation phase was all about planning for actual implementation of the vision plan. But the first phase really kind of gave us a chance to ask the whole community what they thought about Smyrna's future, what they thought about the opportunities and the challenges. And we did this in a variety of manners. We'll, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But really the, the synopsis is that we came away with a better understanding of this community. Even as a resident, I learned a great deal about this, this process, about the community, about the people, about all the opportunities that we have here. And a lot of that was... Uh, as a result of one-on-one -on -one interviews and surveys and um, follow-up interviews and discussions with our steering committee who you met previously. They really did put a lot of work into this. So we're going to talk just briefly, in addition to that steering committee and what they did at the meetings, um, it's really important that everyone understands that 
The meetings were two to, ha two to two and a half hours. We had six of them over the course of the six months. But we also had follow-up surveys that we asked everyone to, to fill out. We asked for additional names for interviews throughout the process. We asked for individual one-on-one -on -one sit-downs with the steering committee as well. We asked them to read some reports, which were always extremely exciting, um, whether they were full of lots of data or full of the vision plans ideas themselves. And so that, that really adds up to a lot of time and energy and, and the thought process that went into actually crafting and taking the information from the community and putting it into something that was that can be actionable and measurable. Um, so I want, wanted just to make sure we highlight that, but also recognize that the technical advisory group, which Melanie mentioned, um, very important to this process, informing not just our steering committee and the, and the staff at Market Street, but helping support the entire process and hopefully helping support you as well in providing that information. So. Where do we start? We start with a blank slate. We really we went out to the community. We had those interviews and surveys. What we were trying to find out, though, was something that we didn't know where we were going to go at that point. So we asked for a lot of input. We had 20 one-on-one -on -one interviews. We had 13 focus groups. And the online survey, which was, was tremendously successful, reached over 1,700 people. And that was online and paper surveys that we handed out at the John Cole Festival, which some of our steering committee members volunteered their weekends to make sure that we were out there doing. And that eventually fed up to the steering committee. The steering committee helped fashion that into ideas that beca became the framework for the vision plan itself. You know, what are we going to do with this information? Where are all those opportunities? What challenges do we need to address? We had great discussions in those meetings over the course of the six or seven months. There was a lot of ideas about what we could do, what we should do, how we prioritize. Um, but ultimately, the recommendations ended up in the vision plan, which you all have seen and is now available on the website as well, smyrnavision.com. And that really that process, that bottom-up process, is something that was really important to you all when you started this process, and we feel like it was fulfilled really well, not just from the ideas that Market Street had, but really the ideas that the steering committee and the technical advisory group had for getting the word out and soliciting additional input. Uh, we've given you a sample, just a really brief sample of some of the feedback that we got during the community assessment phase where we asked people what they thought. Um, some of these quotes really just helped capture that spirit of people being very excited about this, Smyrna being a great place, but, you know, one that needs a vision to kind of drive its direction. Um, you know, love it here. It can only get better. There was a definite feeling of this is a really good community. We love it here. We want it to get even better. I want to stay here. So we'll talk a little bit about that, how that evolved into our theme. But that's just a sample, and there's a lot more of the feedback that we got in the individual quotes. We included those in the reports early on and throughout the process. Ultimately, we were able to uh, work together with the steering committee and come up with a framework for this vision plan, and it's a three-part framework. What we saw is a, a theme that ran through the entire process, the, ent the, the, all the ideas that we had and the input, and that theme is community attachment and commitment. And that second part's very important. We, we feel like there's a lot of folks who are attached. We want them to be committed to staying as well. We want them to be committed to volunteering as well. So that attachment and commitment are key points. The three areas which you can see are involvement and leadership, the quality of the place, and the image and identity of the community. There's a vision statement that the community uh, steering committee came up with as well after really sorting through what was really important to this, this community. That hi that's highlighted up there as well, and that's that drove a lot of what ended up in the vision plan itself. And, of course, the vision plan has a lot of specific recommendations and action steps and tactical ideas on, on you know, beginning to help us visualize how this could get done. It also has best practices that we were able to pull from our work around the country just to give ideas, not necessarily to replicate in full, but just to kind of plant the seed on how would Smyrna do this if we were to implement it here. So there's a number of those included in the actual vision plan itself. Once we got through that phase of the work, which was two and a half meetings really dedicated to the vision plan itself after discussing the findings, we then started talking about how we do this then, how we actually implement this. The structure you see up here, this little colorful chart, shows that the steering committee will morph into an executive committee that works individually with five different work groups. So we took the three cornerstone groups, we added uh, and pulled out really everything that had to do with schools and also everything that had to do with community and economic development. We felt like those ran through each of the three themes. So we have those, that's our framework. We're going to move forward with the work groups with an executive committee above them. 
This is very hard to read even in, in a large screen, but what you can see is uh, over 50 implementation partners that we've been able to call out here. We have had contact with representatives or ombudsmen with each of these groups, a, a lot of them, and we will continue to work with those. The steering committee in their implementation role will be meeting with these folks, trying to figure out you know, who can help us accomplish and implement the vision plan itself. And we ex fully expect that this list will grow continually over the next 10 years. So this is an impossible one to read, um, but thank you. That's the, that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> and I just exited myself out. What we have here is me on screen. Um, so what we have here is the implementation metrics, and that's basically how we measure our success. As I was saying, it's impossible to read it, but I want you to know that it's in the implementation plan in a variety of ways that we can we offered that you can measure success. Some of that is cold, hard facts, objective information that can be pulled up by anyone. Some of it is also some measures, and, and this is a list of things that show, you know, are we making progress, are we moving forward? It's activity measures. And then some things are simply the checkbox. You know, have we done this? Is it checked off the list? It's really important for you to measure your success and to rep report out to it amongst yourself, amongst those works groups, and the whole community at large. Finally, just as a, as a next step and sort of to offer up to you that the next piece in this is actual implementation, we highly encourage you to build on those work groups. Um, we've already begun talking with the steering committee. They're set to start meeting, to start recruiting additional members of those work groups. In the communities that we've worked in all over the country, what we see as successful communities is not skipping a beat, just moving right from the process to beginning to implement. A lot of the things will take a long time to implement. Some things will ta won't take quite as long. But you have to get started, and you have to involve the community as much as possible. You have a very motivated community that's ready to be engaged, uh, represented here well by the steering committee. And it's been a pleasure for us to work with you, and I just want to say thank you for, again for engaging us. I also don't want to forget to introduce Katie Bass, who's here as well. She's one of the members of the Market Street team, and we just had a, a great experience working with you, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Um, I would just say, I don't know what you're going to say, but if there's anybody that was, that was on the committee that'd like to say anything, I know that y'all spent a lot of time together and a lot of input went into, went into this. Um, they can, can they get this online? I mean, is this something that's going to be available so folks can read through it? And so, yes, the SmyrnaVision.com website is, uh, is, has our project documents, has executive summary, which you saw me uh, passing out here today. And eventually that will probably transition to another website that's maintained long term. It's something that we created for this process. But SmyrnaVision.com is the best place to go at this point. And that uh, that website has been up and active and constantly updated for about six or seven months now. It, yeah, it, it went up in April. It's been updated since then. Kathy, Katie, thank you all so very much. Um, and I wanted to let the steering committee know that the executive committee has already moved forward and we have scheduled a meeting December 2nd. And we're going to be contacting a list of about 300 people that said they wanted to be involved in the implementation process. So we're going to start in December and get moving and then in January we're all going to have set up some meetings and we're going to move forward with this and there's not enough thank yous to tell you how much I appreciate this and how great it's been to get to know you and know how much you care about Smyrna and I just want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart it's really been rewarding very rewarding thank you all so much and anyone like to say anything that was on the committee I'm sorry. I said, just ask, was there anybody that would like to say anything? Okay. That means no. Thank you all very much. Uh, tomorrow is election day, if you all did not know that. I know you all are sick and tired of watching all these uh, very positive ads uh, from all the candidates. But tomorrow from 7 to 7. Um, do we have any candidates here that would like to come up and say something positive? <laughs> you just said everyone's sick of looking at us. I appreciate you <laughs> inviting me up here. But <laughs> um, I, and I'm actually glad that I'm here with the Visioning Committee because I think a lot of the report, as I understand it, does focus on education. And we know that our community can be no more attractive 
are prosperous unless we have good schools. So I'm Susan Thayer. I'm running for the school board. Um, I hope that you will vote tomorrow if you've not already voted. Um, mainly, I hope you'll do your research on all candidates and that you'll make your voice heard. So I would appreciate your support and thank you. I would say this, that's probably one of the, uh, if not the number one position that we, uh, that we vote for uh, tomorrow. So please get out and vote if you haven't already voted. So thank you very much. It's going to be critical. Thank you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hello, okay. my name is Kenya Pierre, and I'm also running for Cobb County School Board. And um, I'd like to just say a few words. I'm, I have three kids who are actually in the schools, and I'm an attorney. I'm one of the people who is actually part of this vision of Smyrna to bring us to a progressive and an upbeat city and make sure that our children are prepared for tomorrow. Um, I work at a Fortune 500 company, and I see what it takes for our children to be prepared for tomorrow not only for Smyrna, but also for our global economy. I want to make sure that our children are prepared in such a way that when they graduate, they come back and they live here and they are citizens that can contribute because they are academically prepared. So I'm standing here today, not only as a mom, not only as someone who is educated down here at Spelman College, but I'm here because I want to make sure that, Sp that Smyrna is a strong city. I chose to stay here, and I chose to come here and live. And I believe that we can be that progressive, upbeat city that is part of our vision and our implementation. And we have to do it together. But we have to go forward, and we have to do it with people who are ready to be strong leaders and strong voices for our community. So thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. My name is Eric Allen. I'm running for State House District 40. Um, I am not a resident of Smyrna. I'm Smyrna adjacent, right over in Bonnie. Everybody so, can't live in the city. I, I, yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. But I do uh, work and play um, a lot of times in Smyrna. So I look forward to, uh, if elected tomorrow, I do look forward to working with this group to see that vision come to reality, as well as working with uh, whichever candidate is the post to um, winner because I do believe that uh, schools are the anchor for any community. If you give up on a school, you've given up on the community, and we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to invest, reinvest, and reinforce and support our parent, teachers, administrators, and board members um, when things at the state are impacting them. So I do look forward uh, to working with you. I urge anyone that has not voted yet, I know we've had a lot of people that have already voted. If you have not voted yet, I do uh, ask for your vote. And once again, thank you for giving me a few minutes to speak. Thank you very if you're much. Close enough, we could annex you in. Just consider <laughs> that. I, I, I'm re real close, Ron. Real close. You know how close I am. Real close. Anyone else? Mars seven to seven. The polls will be open if you hadn't already voted. Um, I want to mention this. Tammy Sadler Jones, our assistant city administrator, had her baby yesterday. It was yesterday. Okay, um, and his name is Arthur Leland, is that right? And uh, both the baby and the mother are doing great. And, so, and no, he's not named after me, Arthur Max. But um, I know they are excited. Um, that's their first child. And, uh, if you're watching Tammy and Lamar, congratulations. Uh, it's just the beginning. You, you only... You don't have a clue <laughs> what the kids, they'll be there forever, though, but they're, it's great. And I'm, I saw a picture of, uh, of Arthur uh, this morning. He looks great. He's, um, so congratulations. Lakes tomorrow. Item four is land issues, zonings, and annexations. We have nothing. Item five is previous licenses. <clears throat> we have nothing. Six is formal business. A 2014, 343 approval. Uh, the reappointment of George Davis to the Civil Service Board for a two-year term to expire on November 16, 2016. Um, that's under Mr. Wade Lenica. I don't, there's nothing. There's really no background. It's an appointment that's made by the mayor and council. That's a three-member board. Uh, out of those uh, members, uh, the other member is voted on by the 
Smyrna Fire and Police, and then from those two members, they elect one. So this is the city's appointment. I'll turn this over to Councilman Wade Lenica, who chairs the uh, HR committee. Mr. Lenica. Thank you, Your Honor. George Davis has served well on this board for several years and is asked to continue, and um, I believe he's done a good job representing the city of Smyrna as well as the employees of Smyrna. So I move to uh, adopt item 2014-343, uh, reappointment of George Davis to the Civil Service Board for a two-year term to expire November 16th, 2016. I have a motion by Mr. Lenica, seconded by Ms. Wilkinson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. Uh, one more somewhere. That's approved 7 0. Item 6B under formal business is uh, RES 2014-14, it's author authorized resolution 2014-14, the execution of a non-binding letter of intent and or financial advisor agreement from time to time with Raymond James and Associate Inc. Mr. Taylor, the background, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, effective uh, July 1st, 2014, the uh, United States Security and Exchange Commission actually placed new rules uh, as it relates to the types of communications um, that uh, bond underwriters and uh, other issues of municipal debt um, can have in terms of conversation with the folks that they represent. Uh, we have pretty extensive conversations with the folks at Raymond James, in particular uh, Tom Owens and uh, Gordon Morton, and this particular agreement uh, just helps cover um, the types of uh, information we can, we can talk about with each other. We recommend approval. Ms. Terry Nullowitz, who chairs the... Uh finance and administration. Thank you. Yes, this is pretty straightforward. It is um, exactly what Mr. Taylor said it is, and it keeps us in line with Dodd-Frank. And for that reason, along with several others, I move to go ahead and approve item 4, I'm sorry, 6B, which is resolution 2014-14. It is to authorize resolution 2014-14, the execution of a non-binding letter of intent and or financial advisor agreements from time to time. Do we have the times? This, by the way, we just think from time, to time. from time to time with Raymond James and Associates Incorporated. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. Let's approve 7 0. Item C is 2014 360, authorizing an agreement with Doug Hauser and allow the mayor to sign and execute all related documents. Um, Mr. Taylor, the background, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, several years ago, we were approached by um, Doug Kalser. He's a resident who lives uh, downstream from the Westbrook Park subdivision off of North Cooper Lake Road. Um, he had been having some adverse drainage conditions on his property, um, and it appears that, uh, uh, well, we've had several, several different organizations look at this, different engineers, and it appears that the city may have some sort of, of, uh, of uh, negligence in this. Um, and so, um, Mr. We've been working with Mr. Hauser um, and on a on a proposed settlement, and so we're actually recommending that uh, we uh, issue a payment to uh, Mr. Hauser in the amount of twenty-one thousand one hundred fifty-eight dollars, uh, so that he can uh, do the necessary work that will create the problem on the property in exchange for a uh, release of liability uh, for the city. We do recommend approval. This is in uh, Mr. Fennell's district, Mr. Fennell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a proposal that uh, came from the uh, the uh, resident who uh, had some adverse conditions, as was outlined. And uh, I had a chance to work with him for a couple of years, and Mr. Welch and the mayor. Um, after a review from our uh, city engineer and legal counsel, we believe this uh, is a solution that uh, remedies uh, Mr. Hauser's concern. Uh, and uh, is a reasonable settlement the city is uh, comfortable with. Therefore, I move uh, to approve or to authorize an agreement with Doug Hauser to allow the mayor to sign all executed and related documents 2014-360. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Welch. Is there any discussion? Mr. Lenica? Yes, Your Honor. I, I do not support this motion. Uh, I have a lot of very strong concerns about the principles underlying this uh, proposed agreement. 
Um, the problem, uh, according to the two previous city engineers with whom I have talked personally in the last 24 hours, does not deal with city water, it deals with water off private property onto a private property homeowner. And I think it's a mistake for the city to get involved in private property disputes between private property homeowners and use taxpayer money as the easy way to settle the dispute because it's easy to spend other people's money. Um, neither previous city engineer, Ken Hildebrandt, nor Keith Williams believes that the city has responsibility for creating the problem or for solving the problem. Um, they also both told me that no one from the city other than me has actually called and talked to them and asked them. They have worked between them for years on this issue. They're very familiar with it. And they were very concerned about the precedent we'd be setting. Um, I've talked with the city attorney, uh, understand this could provide a release, but I also am concerned that if we give a $20,000 Christmas bonus check to, to one neighbor that somebody next door or downstream might decide they'd like a $20,000 bonus check from the city as well. I also heard from, again, the two previous city engineers that there's other drainage issues in other neighborhoods where if we decide to use city money to, to buy a settlement uh, for one disgruntled homeowners, they would expect the city to hear from other disgruntled homeowners in different but similar situations saying, Where's my payoff? Um, I think this is wrong. I think it's wrong to use city money to settle this dispute. Uh, I'm not convinced this is the right thing to do, and I strongly uh, oppose passage of this. Mr. Mayor. Well, I, well just, I'll say this, that one of your statements was incorrect, Mr. Lenica. I have talked to Keith Williams about this before. Ken Hildebrandt, no. Ken Hildebrandt's been gone long before this subdivision was built, but I did talk with Keith Williams uh, at the time that this was going on. So, um, Mr. Mayor, I will also note that for the last two detailed discussions on this matter tonight and then two weeks ago, uh, all members of council were present except one, and he has an objection. I think it's uh, uh, important that if you're going to hear the latest information from our professionals, our city engineer and our city attorney who have recommendations, who understand precedent in the law and who understand solutions and costs. If you're not going to attend those discussions, then it's unfair of you to opine otherwise, my opinion. Yeah, and, and, and I'll say this, that uh, I, I don't if, disagree if with you that, have Mr. information, it would be important. nice for us to get to be shared with each other, too. It, it also was important for us to have adult discussions in that room without name calling by the mere fact that we're asking questions. We had a meeting last Monday night where we discussed this at great length. Um, I have uh, I was made aware of this about three years ago. I spent about two hours Christmas Eve in Doug Hauser's backyard. To be honest with you, I thought the issue had been resolved, and until I'd say a month or two weeks ago, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, not on, not not when I was there, but any, anyhow, uh, not until two weeks ago, when our city attorney advised us that there was some liability. City had some liability in this issue, which is the first time that I'd ever heard this. Um, was when it came to mind that if we as a government did something wrong, then we ought to step up to the plate, put our big boy pants on, and say we did something wrong. Not say, hey, we're the government. We never do anything wrong. But what I have heard is that, is that we may have made some mistakes, and there may be some liability out there. Um, there again, uh, I agree that if we have a meeting, we ought to get all the information all at one time and not be dumped on out here by saying, hey, I, here's what I talked with so-and-so. None of us knew that. So, Mr. Mayor, yes, I also want to address the statement that Mr. Lenica made that he was asking questions. No, he was making incorrect statements. That's why he was called down, yeah, not that he was asking questions. Who, who, who said that? I did. 
Well, just hold it down. We don't have outbursts like that. I just. Well, we'd like to be able to hear what's being said. Otherwise well, why don't you come a little closer? David, why don't you come a little closer? Can you hear me now? Yeah, now that you've got the microphone on. Okay, you didn't hear anything I said? Nope. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I was telling Mr. Lenica that he made a statement that he was asking questions. No, Mr. Lenica didn't ask questions. Mr. Lenica was making some incorrect statements. And I told him that that was not true. And that's what he's referring to as asking questions. So I just wanted to set the record straight. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Mr. Welch. I, I'd just like to comment um, uh, on this, the, the issue itself. The issue itself is a, is a, is a drainage problem that I, I've looked at. I personally went out there, uh, met with Mr. Hauser, um, and told him on the day that I went out there and met with him that I felt like the city had some liability involved in it. I am a, a president of a civil engineering company here in Smyrna, Georgia, have been working for this firm for 33 years. And we are not the, the, the sole contributor to the problem, but, but we made some mistakes. The city made some mistakes along the way with this. And I, I agree that this is the, it's not a perfect solution. And if someone else comes to us with a problem that they say the city is contributing to, we, we have to take one case at a time. That's all we can do. But, uh, but we have some, some problems with this issue, and I'm going to support it uh, because I believe we, we have some liability issues here. And, uh, you know, I, that's, that's my opinion on it. I, I'm going to ask uh, our city attorney, Scott Cochran. With, um, Scott, did you not tell me that the city had some liability in this issue? Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of thing that would probably go to a jury. There's potential liability. The The issue with this case, as I see it, is that it would probably cost around the amount that the settlement agreement is for us to fight this and win. Uh, it's So when you factor all of that in, if, if we fought this and lost, uh, our internal numbers were about triple what, what this number is. So this is a... In my view, it was a classic compromise. It was, uh, you know, one party claims that the city was negligent and caused damages of X, and we said, no, we're not, and somewhere we met like a whole lot closer to no, we're not than to the, the other number. And so th that's what I was looking at. There's potential liability. Uh, it's not absolute, um, but my thought was that it would cost around this amount for us to fight it and win when you factor in uh, fees and court costs and all that. So, that All right, any other discussion? We have a motion to second to approve this, uh, this agreement. All those in favor of the motion, please vote. Um, let's approve five to two. Let's, let's see who voted. Oh, it's Ms. Wickles and Mr. Lenica. That's odd. Okay. Uh, item D, 2014 342, consideration approval to extend benefits to all eligible employees entering into legal recognized marriages. This will be tabled January 5th, 2015. Um, uh, Mr. Lenica. It's got your name back. You're the one that brought this thing up. Mayor, I make a motion that we table it okay. to January 5th. Make a motion. We have a motion to table January 5th. Do we get a second? Yes. Chip. Yes. I'm sorry. I'll second it. Second. All those in favor of the motion, please vote. It's not coming up. It's not coming up. Andrea seconded. I seconded. Well, uh, Corky seconded. Well, it doesn't matter. It don't matter to me. <laughs> That's approved to table to uh, four to three. Uh, with uh, I would I don't see it, but I think it's probably Miss Nullowich, Mr. Lenick, and Miss Wilkinson. Um, commercial building permits we have none. Eight is consent agenda. Mr. Tay, will you please read the consent agenda for council's approval? Well, Mr. Mayor, we have uh, eight items on the on the uh, consent agenda this evening. Item A is an approval of the October 20th, 2014 Mayor and Council meeting minutes. Item B is to award RFP 15-011 to the lowest responsive bidder, AT&T, 
for E91 next generation uh, VOIP phone system for the amount of $186,386. Item C, it's the word RFP 15-012, Roswell Street Storm Drainage Project to the lowest bidder, DNH Construction Company, for $89,900, and authorize the mayor to execute any related documents. Item D is an approval to award a cooperative contract to Game Time in the amount of $84,561.29 for shade additions to existing playgrounds. Item E is to award RFP 15-007 for community center ceiling tile replacement to the lowest bidder, ICS Incorporated, for $64,850. Authorize the mayor to execute any related documents. Item F is an approval of an agreement for content management system upgrade for the City of Smyrna website and associated expenses in the amount of $35,000. And authorize the mayor to execute related documents. Item G is to, uh, for the mayor and council to approve and authorize the mayor to execute the right-of-way deed to the roadway improvement of Concord Road and the right-of-way dedication for such purposes. Item H is uh, a retroactive approval to close the road in Williams Park Subdivision, Anderson Circle, for a Halloween event on October 31st, 2014. And item I is also a retroactive approval to close Wisteria Lane and Brentwood Drive for a block party November 1st, 2014, 2.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Your Honor, I move to approve consent agenda items A, B, C, E, G, H, and I. Hold on, hold on. What, uh, what items were they now? My motion was to approve items A, B, C, E, G, H, and I. pull those items out well, that's what he's doing we have a motion to approve these those items um, we have a second who said that you speak in the microphone so everybody can hear you a second get that done. a motion second to approve only items ABC e I, H and I, is that correct? G, H and I. G, H and I. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please vote. That's four to one. We're still two, four to two. One more. Five to two. That's approved five to two. Now they'll hear a motion that we approve items uh, D, F, D and F. Is that right? Is that right? Second. D and F. And what about H and I? I second. D and F. Those are only two left, right? D and F. We got a motion by Miss Sonoda, which is that correct? That's correct. And the seconded by Ron Fennel. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. It's five to two. So everything got approved. Miss Wilkerson and Mr. Lenica voted against this odd. Okay. Committee reports. We'll start tonight, Mr. Ron Fennel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Police Chief uh, David Lee in the room? No, I don't think okay. you so. Um, I want to thank uh, our public safety officials for uh, helping us out over the holiday season. I don't know if any of you know that uh, during the uh, Halloween, while a lot of our uh, uh, young people were out in a pedestrian mode, the police department uh, stepped up the uh, presence of the police throughout the community to assure public safety. Uh, it's always well received whenever you have more public safety officials, but uh, the kids treated them kind of like heroes. Uh, there was a lot of candy and a lot of uh, smiles. So uh, thank you to the police department who took on an additional uh, obligation to keep our uh, community's uh, precious next generation safe. We appreciate that very much. I want to thank the uh, Grace Meadows Homeowners Association for inviting me to come out and visit with them. Uh, 
I will have to talk with them next year about scheduling and on Georgia Florida weekend on the day of the game at the time of the game. Uh, <laughs> but it was uh, pleasant to visit with those folks. Uh, I appreciate Chief Lee and um, and Officer Kaysen coming out to talk about the um, elements around our neighborhood watch program uh, and uh, the the community. Uh, as many other HOAs in our community uh, engaged and uh, interested in what's going on within the city. Uh, it's appreci I'm appreciative of those folks who uh, take the time to uh, invite us to come out. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I yield. Mr. Wade Lenneke. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I want to thank the management at Ridgeview Institute and the folks in the Vinings Glen neighborhood for the meeting that we had together um, at Ridgeview on October 22nd to talk about the expansion plans uh, for Ridgeview and how that might or might not impact the adjacent uh, neighborhood. It was a good meeting, and we'll meet again as construction gets further along and uh, folks can kind of see more about what's happening. But I appreciate everyone being there. Uh, just uh, also want to thank Mary Moore, our library director, for the program that she had Saturday night and the Friends of the Smyrna Library. Uh, they had a program called Meet Mr. Lincoln. They had a Lincoln uh, actor, impersonator, whatever would be the right term, uh, come down from Tennessee, uh, did a marvelous job. Uh, he talked about Lincoln from his boyhood days through his campaigns and the Civil War and presidency and uh, quoted verbatim a number of his speeches, which is, uh, again, a remarkable feat. Many of us had to learn years ago the Gettysburg Address well, he not only quoted that, but he did both inauguration speeches and a number of other talks. And uh, it brought to light uh, truly what a great president President Lincoln was. Um, he is a, a phenomenal leader in our history. And uh, I was especially pleased uh, to see Miss Anulowitz there with her young children and other young families. I, I think for the kids there to get an understanding of uh, what President Lincoln did and uh, be able to ask him questions and get real-time answers and understand more about his life and uh, all the troubles and tribulations that he went through was a great way to bring history alive. And again, I congratulate the Smyrna Friends of the Library and uh, our library director for hosting that and making that available to our community. Uh, just a reminder that uh, next Tuesday, November 11th at 11 o'clock, we will have a Veterans Day ceremony next door here at the Veterans Memorial, corner of Bank Street and King Street. Uh, we've got a great speaker, got an Army band, should last about 45 minutes. I want to be respectful of everyone's time on a work day. But if you can uh, come out and take a moment to remember and honor veterans uh, living and dead that you know or have in your family, uh, that would be a great way to do it. November 11th, Tuesday, 11 a.m. at the Veterans Memorial. With that, I yield. Ms. Susan Wilkinson. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, say a couple of things. Um, I want to bring up the subject that uh, happened earlier tonight. And I was at that meeting, and the things that were being asked and spoke of uh, Mr. Lenica, Councilman Lenica, um, in my opinion, weren't un untruths, but whether they are or not, I believe everybody um, um, deserves a chance to uh, be able to speak in the meeting and express their concerns. Uh, and when they're uh, called names, uh, you know, that's just really despicable behavior. And I just want to say I was in that meeting and I disagreed totally with what was said. And I've heard other people say things that I didn't think were true, but I didn't call them names. And um, so, and and also I want to um, thank the uh, the residents of Cheney Woods for inviting me to their block party yesterday. I really enjoyed it. And uh, with that, I yield. Uh, Mr. Corky Well. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to also thank the, the people in Grace Meadows who invited us, Ron and I, and the police chief over this past Sunday for their HOA meeting, and, and we we dominated their meeting. I think we took about two hours before we got out of there. But uh, it was a great meeting, and uh, they, it was hosted by Diane Rayson, and she fed us and uh, took good care of us while we were there. Also, I'd like to announce that this coming Thursday evening, between 6 and 7.30, I think I had posted on my Facebook page at one point that it was 7 o'clock, but the meeting is at Bronner, 
to discuss the Concord Road corridor plan. Um, and this is, is not actually a plan. We, we hired a company simply to go in and do a study as to what options that we should look at uh, uh, for, for, for that corridor and what to do with the property that we have left over after Concord Road is, is developed. Uh, we haven't actually contracted with a company to develop a landscape plan or anything, but, uh, but this meeting on Thursday night uh, is you know, open to everyone. Uh, please feel free to come. It's 6 o'clock at Brawner, and uh, we welcome you there. With that, I yield. Ms. Taryn Nolowich. Thank you. Yes, I'm also going to uh, make an effort to attend that meeting at 6 o'clock on Thursday at Bronner Hall. I have um, several things going on at that same time, so I might not be able to stay for the entire time, but I am going to do my best to be there and to hear from folks. And so a lot of that part of Concord Road is going to be going into Ward 3 in a, a year. So I will be there as, for as much of the meeting as I can be on Thursday. It was a great Halloween. There was a little bit of rain, but that didn't dampen, I think, anything beyond just a few costumes. I want to especially thank the folks at Fire Station 1. And if you are trick-or-treating in Ward 3 and you're within walking distance of Fire Station 1, I highly recommend paying them a visit because they have lots of candy. <laughs> they love to have trick-or-treaters. And things don't get too crazy until later, you know, past trick-or-treat time. And so they were, they were really gracious and were wonderful about sharing the three bags of candy that they had. So, again, if you have candy pounds, visit Fire Station 1. They were wonderful. The polls are open tomorrow from 7 to 7. Ward 3 residents vote at the Smyrna Community Center. Uh, make sure to go because there are several important things on the ballot that impact all of us here in Georgia and more locally here in Ward 3. Particularly, there are several um, SPLOS things that impact Ward 3 residents. They are also... Um, I wanted to take a moment to thank everyone who participated in the vision process, thank uh, Market Street for being here tonight, to thank all the members of the steering committee who came tonight, and also thank all the residents who participated in the vision process so far in ways beyond even being on the steering committee. We had so many folks who volunteered to participate in focus groups and to participate in one-on-one -on -one interviews with the consultants. We had all the folks who took the survey and we have folks who are going to continue to participate and who will be joining this as it moves forward into the implementation phase so thank you for all of those things the Lincoln event at the library truly was fantastic and with that I yield is Andrew Bluestein Uh, it was a pleasure to be able to see the members of the steering committee here tonight and to be able to put a face with the name. Um, if they weren't in my ward, sometimes I didn't know who we were talking about, but um, I enjoyed seeing them, and they um, I think they've done a great job so far. <coughs> um, like Ms. Anolowitz, I want to remind you, go vote um, and, you know, tr try to support the SPLOST um, We've got some great projects coming up, and, um, you know, we, we'd like for the community as a whole to support that. Um, and just think, hopefully we'll have a winner in some of these contests tomorrow, because otherwise we get till January 5th to uh, listen to more ads. So, um, but it... Uh, and if you ever have to vote early, that community center over on Windy Hill is great. I was in and out of there last Wednesday in about 10 minutes. I have never voted anywhere where it took me 10 minutes. So, anyway, with that, I yield, Your Honor. Ms. Uh, Melanie Pritchett. Um, one thing I want to add about the steering committee I, and the vision, smartupvision.com. You can go on there and find out, see all the information that we have compiled so far. And um, I just can't tell you how dedicated these people are and how much they love Smyrna. And they're looking forward to implementing this with a lot of partners, business partners, associations, that sort of thing. So we're definitely moving forward. And just it's great to have these, this kind of interest in the city of Smyrna. And if any of you out there are interested, you can call Christy at City Hall and let her give her your name. And we'll get you on a list and someone will contact you. Um, I, too, want to remind everybody to vote tomorrow. Ward 1 votes at Argyle School, and as Terry said, the polls open to 7 to 7. Um, you know, there were places in the world where people risk their lives to hey, go vote. Excuse me, could you two fellows down here give your attention to Miss Pritchett? She listened to y'all. Y'all should listen to her. Go ahead. There are places in the world where people risk their lives to go vote, 
and I don't care who you vote for, exercise that right to go vote. And with that, I yield, Max. Uh, Mr. Eric Taylor. Mr. Scott Cock. Mr. Terry Graham. Anybody else? We got two people signed up for citizens' input. Alec Backley, 3459 Shawnee. 3459 Shawnee Trail comments. Uh, thank you. I'd like to comment on that article last week on the same-sex benefits. Obviously, I feel there's some people on this council that feel they can rule above state law. Again, this term of legally uh, married couples is not correct in Georgia. Now, one council person mentioned that there's 18 states that don't acknowledge it. That is incorrect. It's 38 states that have voted on it. Also, a councilwoman commented that uh, it won't cost us any more money. And that is an absurd statement. Of course, it's going to cost us more money. Now, I just don't understand why these couples, uh, why the partners can't go out and get a job where they have their own insurance. But what bothers me is, we could have had this on the ballot tomorrow where you could see where the citizens of Sperna stand on the majority rule. That did not happen. And to just by luck at the last meeting, we saw it on the computer. And if you hadn't stopped by City Hall and picked up our itinerary, no one would have known about it. But people do know about it now. Now that you've tabled it to January 15th, I hope you have people speak before you vote. Uh, that is, gives a, people that n didn't know about it a chance to come up and give a five minutes on how they feel about this. Again, this goes against the good book, which is crystal clear, as well as state law. And I hope the people that uh, don't seem to get it, as far as I'm concerned, the next election in Smyrna is a year from today. I will personally do my best to campaign for anyone that opposes the council people that vote in favor of trying to pass this in the next election. I just can't believe that with state law, and we've checked it, that uh, we would have to pursue a lawsuit if this passes. It is blatantly not correct in Georgia. As an example, Oklahoma had a referendum. 76% voted it down. And by the way, last week there was an article in the Marietta Journal of a thousand pastors at the annual convention turning it down at their national convention. So I don't know where this trend thinks comes from when you have a majority rule and the, I see no trend going in favor of the same-sex couples. Again, it violates the good book, and it violates the state law. Until the state law changes, it's illegal to acknowledge same-sex couples. And I hope the people that want to vote in favor of this think about it again. Thank you. Rebecca, is this Norton? Newton. Newton, I'm sorry. 1154 Fleming Street, or comments or trees on trees yeah i'm not nearly so dramatic i'm sorry it's okay um, i have a tree and i wanted to compliment the city um, i have a boundary tree on my property where they're going to build two houses um, and i think they've made a good effort you know to make sure you know to save it as best they can it's a 12 foot in circumference tree oak tree and it's it's a benefit, I think, to, to me. Of course, I love it. But to the new neighborhood that's coming in, to have the older trees. Um, and I appreciate working with Rusty. And I had my own arbor culturalist come out, who's a local here in Smyrna. And uh, she gave me some advice on it. And I uh, just wanted to say thanks and hope you keep up the good work on uh, some of the older trees. I hope it survives. Me too, and I'm looking forward to the bond that's supposed to come with it because they're encro encroaching on the, the uh, critical root zone. So, 
Good deal. But thank, thank you, you very much. much. Good job, Ken. End on a good note tonight. Good deal. If there's no other business to be brought for this body, I declare this meeting adjourned at uh, like 8.37. 8.35. Yeah, it's, it's sort of fun. I don't have discussion. Why do you have to tell this?